Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you, wherever you may be. Welcome to the channel. Team Sweaty Palms coming back to you with the seventh episode of our multi-part tutorial, How to Become Overpowered in Elden Ring. I am your guide, Bad Human, and today we'll be taking on the Flying Dragon Agil and using its heart to obtain one of the most overpowered incantations in the game, Rotten Breath. So, fire up that machine and let's get going. From the side of Grace, Calum Ruins, Head west to the Forsaken Ruins. A monstrous crow will be guarding an imp statue seal leading underground. Use a stone sword key and collect the Sword of St. Trina. Fast travel back to Calum Ruins. Head south to the next side of Grace, Smoldering Wall. Continue south following the highway. Try to stay off the main path to avoid the patrolling enemies. Just off the path to the left is a scarab containing the Ash of War Lifesteal Fist. Defeat the scarab, then activate the next side of Grace astray from Kaelid Highway North. Head southwest to the Kaelid Waypoint Ruins. Carefully, weave your way through the enemies underground to retrieve the Meteoric Ore Blade. Emerge from the ruins and return to following the path to the next side of Grace, Kaelid Highway South. Directly west, collect the Starlight Shard. Turn southeast and climb the hill to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion. Steer clear of the front door to avoid the Banished Knight. Once inside, collect the Ancient Dragon Apostles Cookbook 3 and activate the Side of Grace. Exit the northeast side of the cathedral to return to the main highway. Collect the map just ahead, then take the off-road path south to a golden seed. Just to the east, guarded by two monstrous crows, you'll find the Windy Crystal Tier. Collect this item and head to the next side of Grace, Impassable Great Bridge. Not too far from this side of Grace is a group of lore swords with a scarab nearby. Defeat the scarab to earn the Ash of War Crag Blade. Climb to the top of the Siege Tower to collect the Arrow Sting Talisman. Afterwards, fast travel to the side of Grace, the first step. From the first step, turn south and head around the tomb to a Spirit Spring jump pad. Leap down and head west following the coast. Under a giant broken structure will be the Nomadic Merchant 3. From him, you want to purchase the Neutralizing Boluses, the Armorer's Cookbook 2, the short bow, and arrows. Afterwards, you'll want to head to the isolated merchant shack in Dragon Barrel. From him, we'll be needing as many serpent arrows as you can get. You'll want at least 30 to be on the safe side. If at any point you need more runes, consider taking time to utilize the ball farm at Lens Rise or the dragon farm at Fort Faroth. We do have videos detailing how these farms work. Links will be in the description below. Speaking of Fort Faroth, head there and we'll solve one of the paintings we got from Celia in a previous episode. Head northeast to the Minor Erd Tree. Facing east, use the Spirit Spring Jump to safely land on a ledge at the bottom of this cliff. Interact with the Phantom Artist to acquire the Ash of War Reign of Arrows. Beside a sleeping golem is a rune arc. Grab that and use the save and quit mechanic to pacify your enemy. Then, fast travel to the stranded graveyard. At this point, we'll do a little prep work for the up and coming boss we'll be facing. At the site of grace, spend all the golden seeds and sacred tears we've collected to upgrade our sacred flasks. Memorize spell Poison Mist and mix the Faith Knot Crystal Tear into your Wonders Physic. Use the Ashes of War menu to apply Rain of Arrows to the short bow. Stand from the Grace and equip the Syncadia. We'll be using its Quick Step skill. Spend your Stone Sword keys at the Fanged Imp statue to break the seal to the Stranded Graveyard. Jump down and use Quick Step to make it across this poison area. Try not to roll like I did. If you do get poisoned, use one of the neutralizing boluses we purchased from earlier. Timing is key here. Use the nooks to the side to avoid the chariot steamrolling its way up and down the main path. 
Be careful though, as some of these alcoves are guarded by phantom exiles. You can take advantage of the chariot and use it to deal with these phantom enemies. In fact, if you're following along, we'll be met with a phantom banished knight. Lure this enemy into the path of the chariot and he'll drop the item we've come for, the dragon communion seal. Collect this item and fast travel to the seaside ruins. From the side of grace, head north to the dragon burnt ruins. There are two chests located here. This one contains the weapon Twin Blade, and the other is a trap chest we want to avoid for now. Beneath the tall tower is a stone sword key, guarded by a rat and a few dogs. Collect the key, then exit the ruins. Finally, the time has come. Equip your short bow, and let's challenge the flying dragon a gill. This is optional, but I use the shield, Great Turtle Shell, to boost my stamina recovery. It isn't necessary for this method, but it helps. Use your Serpent Arrows, coupled with the Ash of War Rain of Arrows, to quickly apply poison to the dragon. Then exit Igil Lake and let the poison run its course. You will need to reapply the poison two or three times, whether by Ash of War or by firing arrows from the back of Torrent. With a bit of patience, you will earn yourself a dragon heart. Take the heart to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion and spend it on the ultimate incantation, Rotten Breath. Rest at the Grace to equip it. Be sure to equip America's Scar Seal and the Dragon Communion Seal. Drink your Wondrous Physic with the Faith Knot Crystal Tear, and you should have what you need to cast your newly acquired incantation. Now that you've become a Dragon God, we'll be using your newfound ability to make quick work of our enemies. Let's meet some now. Fast travel to a Gill Lake North. Head north to an enemy encampment and collect the Armorer's Cookbook 1. Continue past the camp to the side of Grace, Murkwater Coast. Jump into the water below and head south into the valley to be invaded by the NPC Bloody Fingered Narius. When he is nearly within range of your rotten breath, drink your wondrous physic and fire away. Replenish your FP with the Cerulean Flask and time your next breath with the moment Narius attempts to heal himself. Mid-combat, Yura, Hunter of Bloodyfingers will arrive to help you. 
His help can be used to create an opening for you to cast your incantation. Defeat Nereus to collect the Reduvia. Double back under the broken structure and speak with Yura to progress his quest line. Next, we'll take on a small dungeon. Continue south down the valley and head inside the Murkwater Cave. Activate the Sight of Grace and be sure to rest here to replenish your flasks. The boss room isn't too far from here. Head through the fog wall and open the chest to collect the cloth garb and the cloth trousers. The owner of this chest isn't pleased to see you meddling with his things, so he'll attack you. Drink your physic and hit him with the rotten breath as soon as he lands from the ledge above. Once you've done enough damage to him, he'll surrender. Please do not kill him. He introduces himself as Patches the Untethered and says he is a merchant. We'll come back to him later. For now, fast travel to the Seaside Ruins. If you have the painting from the Artist Shack, the Phantom Artist is located near this Grace. Find him to obtain the Incantation Scarab Headpiece. Double back to the Grace, and just off the ledge is a Spirit Spring Jump you can use to reach the shore below. Here I use Rotten Breath on horseback to defeat the Alabaster Lord and obtain the Ash of War Gravitas. Just northwest of the campfire is a tunnel leading back to the Cave of Knowledge. Head inside and collect the Halic Drake Talisman. At this point I decided to do a quick run through of the Cave of Knowledge to activate the Sight of Grace and to collect the Strength Gesture at the other end of the cave. Fast travel back to the Seaside Ruins. Nearby, under a large broken structure is Yura, the NPC that helped you with the invasion from earlier. Exhaust his dialogue to progress his questline, then fast travel to the Murkwater Cave. Head back to the boss room and you'll find Patches there, this time ready to sell you his wares. Purchase Margit's Shackle and the Missionary's Cookbook too. Alright, so we finally got it. Rotten Breath. This incantation, grouped with the short bow and the amount of sacred flasks we have, is enough to carry us through the first legacy dungeon in the game, Stormvale Castle. However, I personally prefer to complete several more tasks before heading into the castle, such as heading to the round table and activating everyone's quest line there, exploring the rest of Limgrave for more talismans and weapons, exploring certain areas in Kaelid, including obtaining the sorcery Night Maiden's Mist through Millicent's questline, and the dual boss cheese there in Redmain Castle, exploring Lyrnia of the Lakes where we can find even more upgrades for our sacred flasks, and finally, tackling certain dungeons that are cheesable using the equipment and items we've gathered. If you think you'd like to see more tutorial videos like this, let us know in the comment section below. We'll always try our best to respond to any questions or concerns you may have. Stick with us, we've got you covered. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, or if you feel we may have missed anything that you'd like to add, please leave a comment below. Thank you for your time, goodbye, and have a wonderful day. Tea Sweaty Palms!